Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Kathy back here. Um, so we just recorded this uh, about an hour or two ago. And the enemy is a major loser. And boy, oh boy, did he not want this to get out. So I actually recorded for a good hour and 10 minutes. And only 37 minutes of it actually recorded. Um, praise the Lord. It was the, the majority of the, the sharing part. So I'm really happy actually. Um, but so we're going to go ahead and re, re replay this. So you'll be able to hear this part of the teaching and then I will pick up where I left off that did not record. Okay. So let me say a prayer first. Um, Jesus, I thank you and I praise you that you saved as much of this as you did and that you give me the endurance to do what I need to do to re-record the parts that didn't record. I praise your holy name because this is all for your glory and nothing for us. All of you and none of us, Lord, this is your ministry, Lord. So Jesus, I ask you to give me the words to speak and Touch the hearts of those that you want this message to go to. Thank you, Jesus, and we praise your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hi, guys. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> I haven't been on camera in a while, but I thought I'm going to do a little bit of um, updating and a little talking about um, transfiguration and stuff because... We got a lot of new people out there, um, a lot of new people who've uh, become like subscribers on Brighteon. So you may not really know what um, Transfiguration is and, and um, First Fruits and all that stuff. So I thought I'd just do a, a kind of a review and a little bit of an update because we've been getting a lot of new things from the Lord that are like clarifying our stance and where the Lord has has us and the puzzle pieces and stuff. And so I kind of want to go through that a little bit. Um, so I think we'll just, uh, I'll just go ahead and jump in. Uh, so, okay. Um, so there are several, uh, viewpoints on, um, how things are going to go, come down or go down when they, when things are already starting, but you know what I mean? Um, as far as pre-trib, post-trib, um, mid-trib even, and, um, there's a lot of, of different ways of looking at it that people learn from their churches, from their pastors, from their friends, from their um, just experience, you know, people they've talked to. And um, some people learn it because they believe a particular set of doctrines and it goes along with their doctrines. You know, it, it, it everybody learns in a different way. So... Um, I'm going to first let you know where we used to stand and then I'll tell you where we stand now. And then I'll just give you a little update on kind of the things that we've picked up even just in the last few months that have really given us a much clearer picture of what's kind of going on and what's going to come. So, um, Dan and I have, we've been married 20 years now and, uh, when we first got married, I had come out of the, I had just left the Catholic church. So Catholics don't really believe anything about end times. We, you know, we never really learned anything. We didn't have any stance. I mean, we knew like, yeah, Jesus is coming back like in hundreds of years or something maybe, but you know, we just never talked about it. It was never really a big topic in the Catholic church. So, um, so I didn't have a lot of opinion, although it used to like seriously annoy me when, when, um, all the, the pre-trib rapture people would just push, 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 push online. Because we used to be, we have a chat room on our website. And, and I did a, a video maybe a couple weeks ago showing you our, our um, website and everything. But um, so we do have a chat room. And our chat room that we made is actually the same kind of chat room Dan and I met in. And we were old school 90s chat room where you just go and you type in, type in the little bar underneath and you hit enter and you just, you know, it's a bunch of people talking in a chat room, but kind of like it is when you go to, to YouTube, when you got in chat and YouTube, it's the same kind of thing. It's scrolling, you know, scrolling people talking and stuff. So, um, anyway, uh, we 
you know, so that's kind of where we were. Now, Dan, when we first met and when we got married, he, when he came back to the Lord at like, um, I think I want to say 37, and then he got baptized at 38. It's, again, it was a, really a second baptism, but um, at 38 and, or not 30, I'm sorry. Scratch that. I'm back, back up. 33. And like, I think at 34, he got rebaptized. And then 36 is when we got married. Okay. Um, and that's approximate that don't quote me on that. But anyway, um, so when we got married, Dan was staunch, staunch pre-trib. He had, was going to church, the, the few churches that he had gone to, he was brand new, but come back to the Lord and, and just soaking it all in like a sponge. So he just believed everything they told him, you know? And so he was pre-trib and, um, he, you know, oh, we're going to go up, we're going to go up, we're getting out of here, you know, and, and that's how he was. And honestly, we just fresh out of the Catholic church, I was still just not irritated, just so tired of people saying that all the time because I didn't really, first of all, I didn't understand it. Uh, but second, it just, they, they acted like they were so cool because they're just going to go up and leave everybody else hanging, you know? And I just was like, whatever. I didn't really understand it, you know? So after we got married, you know, the Lord had le led me to leave the Catholic church, you know, and, or actually I left just before we got married. And then after I had to relearn everything. So, um, once I began to relearn everything, I, I was like looking to the Lord and I said, you know, I don't want to believe the wrong thing, Lord. So if this pre-trib thing's real, I need to get it. I need to understand what this is all about because I don't really get it, you know. So I said, Lord, so please, I'm going to sit down. And Dan heard me praying. I was praying out loud, I think, that night. And he sat down next to me. He said, all right, let's study it, you know. So we sat down and we, we both prayed together. And we said, Lord, just show us. And we went through scripture to scripture to scripture to scripture. And... There was not a single place that backed up preacher of rapture. Not a single place. There was scriptures that people think back up preacher of rapture, but they don't not it not pre-trib the way they think it meant. Okay, nothing backs that up. Nothing backs up a preacher of rapture where they're just taken out left and everybody else has to deal with the tribulation and they don't care. There's nothing that backs that up. So Dan and I, now Dan and I, of course, had no idea about transfiguration. We didn't understand that at all. So, so we came to the conclusion, we believed that the Holy Spirit, at the time, that the Holy Spirit was leading us to believe in a post-trib. So, um, and we had peace with that. You know, we were like, okay, well, you know, God's going to protect us. And as long as we keep our faith in him, no matter what we go through, we're fine. And we always went Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, they're the perfect example, right? They, you know, they they were in the fiery furnace and completely, they didn't even smell like smoke when they came out. Completely protected, completely. So Dan and I just said, well, we'll just, we'll just stay post-trip. So that is how we stayed for 19 years. No joke. Long time. And we fought for it. We stood up for it. We didn't, you know, we knew that's what God showed us. Well, there's actually a reason why God brought us in that direction to begin with. Um, because if you believe that you're going to go through the whole tribulation, then when you find out about transfiguration and the way it's going to really work, oh my gosh, it's so much more glorious. Wow. I mean, we were just like on clouds when we, re when we realized how it's all going to work. So we needed to be in a place where we were ready to go through whatever we needed to go through so that we didn't have any fear. You can't have fear. Can't have any fear. There cannot be any fear. You guys, if you got fear of anything, you need to ask God to heal you of that. You need to absolutely ask God to take it away. Because it's all, if you've got any open doors in the coming days, the enemy's going to use every one of them. You can't have these open doors. You can't have fear of the tribulation. There is no fear of the tribulation. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be fun. But where, when God's protecting you, who can be against you? Right? There's nothing to fear. You can't have fear in these days. You can't. 
When you belong to Jesus Christ, you don't live in fear anymore at all. you got to stand firm in who you know you are in Jesus Christ. Okay? So, we went 19 years believing that we had to go through the whole thing. So, we had zero fear of what was coming. We knew what was coming. We were ready. We were prepared. We're like, all right, we're going to put food away. Got to do this. Got to, you know, make sure we have what we need. And so we knew we were completely prepared and ready to deal with it, right? Now, I'm not saying that we weren't going to come across stuff that was going to like, you know, make the bat hair on the back of our neck stand on end, you know? I'm sure we would kind of freak out a little bit on some of this stuff, but we were, we had no fear. We had complete trust in God. We knew he was going to take care of us, right? So, um, because we believed that, we were able to accept with absolutely no problem that um, transfiguration would happen the way it would happen, that we would come back in, into the harvest, into the tribulation, to bring in the rest of the sheep, to bring in the rest of the sheep into the fold. So um, let me explain to you what the Lord explained to us last year. So, um, uh, okay, so transfiguration... Um, first of all, we, uh, it was, it was a little bit of a slow opening of the revelation to us. And it was just us personally. We didn't hear it from people. The closest we came, I think if, if I remember right, January of 2019, we had started listening. It was, I think I heard our, my first message from the Lord through Julie Wedby. And it was so deep and so beautiful. And there was so much of that that we had already believed. But then there was so much new, supernatural, amazing understanding in it. And it got us really looking to the Lord and going, wow, Lord, there's, wow, it's a little different. Now, she didn't get in, a lot into transfiguration or tra transformation, I think she calls it. She didn't um, talk a whole lot about it in this particular message, but it got us listening, you know. So we started talking. We we're talking back and forth with the team and, and we're like, all right, so what is this transfiguration really all about or transformation or whatever they were saying? And um, the Lord gave me specifically, this was just a revelation for me personally. That's where transfiguration come, came from. Now, I know others. I now know many others have gotten the same word. But at the time, there was nobody calling it transfiguration. Jesus said to me, just like I transfigured on the mount, that was a foreshadow of what you're going to do. So he said, and so that's when he gave me the word transfiguration. It will be a transfiguration. So that was that was pure revelation from the Lord. So I didn't hear that from anybody else. Even some, even some, uh, the other person on the team that I'd been talking to about it, she hadn't even gotten transfiguration. She said, "I just heard transfer transformation." And I'm like, well, I'm telling you, tra transfiguration is what the Lord gave me straight up. And he said it's because he transfigured on the mount. And that was the foreshadow. So that was where we got transfiguration, the word. And come to find out, oh, my gosh, I, the, it was amazing later on that the people that I heard say transfiguration, I was so excited that they understood. Um, so, okay. So it didn't stop there. So the Lord gave me three visions. And the first vision, I saw... Um, I saw a nuclear blast and um, from that nu out from that nuclear blast walked this um, um, a lot like a, a triangle shaped soldiers like um, I don't know maybe not triangle like, like kind of like all the soldiers and there's like a front line marching right through that nuclear blast just marching right through it and um, Coming out on the other side with nothing. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I was like, wow, that's really cool, right? But I had I didn't really have the whole picture, but I knew that it was complete protection. And I was one of the people in the front line. And I was like, wow. So in other words, God's showing me that it were there's not gonna nothing is gonna be able to touch us, right? But I thought, wow, I, I mean, I wonder how that I mean, God can protect anybody, you know. I mean, is it gonna be like total supernatural protection? I didn't really understand. So he kept going, and then I had a second vision where I was in a classroom, and the Holy Spirit was the teacher, and even though I didn't, like, see him standing there, I knew he was there, you know, and um, 
and I'm sitting in the classroom and and I'm looking at the front of the room and to my right wh where the windows would usually be I was I was in the last row over by the windows but instead of windows being there it was this giant wall of color is it I, that's all I call it is a wall of color it's the best thing I can best description I can come up with and um, this wall of color had um, it was like dark blues and beautiful purples and pinks and reds and yellows and blues and what I, I don't even know how to describe it it was like if somebody threw let's say you make a frame of uh like four by sixes not four by six like six by two and make a frame and you fill it you got like a thousand different colored paint cans and you throw them all in and you take a stick and you swirl it all through you know what i'm talking about so it's just all this different color right and then within it um I, be I believe it had like sparklies in it, like there was some sparkles in it. And so it was just this wall of color next to me, you know, and I'm looking at the Holy Spirit because he's teaching, you know, and I'm just sitting there and he said, go, he says, you know, go ahead. In other words, go ahead, try it. And I'm like, what? And go ahead. And I'm like, what, put my arm in there? Yeah. He's like, yes, go ahead. Okay. So I, I reach my arm into this wall of color and I could see there was light all around the edges of my hand and down my arm. It was this light. I'm like, wow. Almost like, I don't know if you ever saw a cloud in front of the sun. It's got like that light around the edge. They call it a silver lining. So it's all this light around it. And I'm like, wow. And then I pulled it out. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, you know. And then I was the vision went away. And that was it. So I'm like, wow, that is really cool. And so um, I think both of those visions were in the same day. And I want to say that maybe a couple days later, I had two people, a brother and a sister from the team, at the beginning of last year when, when all this was happening, I had them on the phone and we were on a three-way call. And um, we're talking about the same thing, the transfiguration, all the pieces that God's starting to give us because they were getting stuff. I was getting stuff. You know, we were all getting these pieces and, and getting through scripture and, and different things. And um, so as they're talking, everything fades out. When God gives me a real solid open vision, he, things just fade out and I just see it. it. That's just how he does it with me. I don't know how other people get it. So everything fades out. People can be talking to me and I won't hear. Everything will just fade out and I'll just be completely focused on the vision. So in this vision, um, I'm sitting here in my house, just as I am, right in this, in fact, facing the, the, that, the windows were behind me. I'm literally sitting, which is like this. And, um, which is why I'm excited because like it's now, so I know it's going to happen. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I was sitting just like this and I, you know, in this vision, I just, I knew that outside I, I could like see almost Jesus kind of hovering, big, huge Jesus, like hovering. But I, I can't say that he was hovering so that everybody could see him. It was more like, I don't, I want to, I don't really know how to describe it. He was just hovering, but I knew that not everybody could see him. That's all I know. Okay. Um, so he was hovering and he said, come, it's time. I'm like, whoa, I am going, right? So I jump up and I run downstairs. We happen to be upstairs, right? I run downstairs and you have to go in that back door, run out the back door and I run around to the front and we live kind of on a main country road, okay? When I walk, when I ran out to the front, there was nothing, like, like the road had been disappeared, like there was no road there and it was just all this perfect, all I can say is, when you get outside of time, you guys, and you see the colors, the grass, the flowers, it's perfection. It, it's beautiful. The green was just green like I've never seen. All green grass, and it was like a grassy knoll, grassy hill that went up. And at the top of the hill, now keep in mind, this hill was really long. It was, I don't know miles so it went it was long it kept going I couldn't see the end of it okay and as I'm running and running my thought was oh there's got to be a lot of other people right so I look and I see a few but I want to say maybe five or six and I'm like wow <laughs> there's, there's not many people out here 
<laughs> okay. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me, wait a minute. I know why. Because it's the first fruits. It's that's right. That, duh. You know, 144,000. It's only a certain, a small fraction, right, of the body. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So it's like all this was flat, very quick. You know, I just went through this frame, this thinking. So um, I run up to the top of the hill, and there's maybe three or four other people with me. And we run up to the top, and and we kind of stop, and we're like, what do we do? Do we just run in? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Do we just run into the color? And before we could even finish our sentence, this sprinter guy, I mean, like a runner sprinter, shoo, runs right past us and runs right in, right into the wall of color. I'm like, whoa, okay, well, wow, what's going to happen? So we were like waiting to see what was going to happen to him, you know? And so he runs in and runs right back out so we could see him covered in light. I mean, just, you know, the light that I said I could see on the edges? everything, this whole layer of light, it was the most beautiful thing I ever saw. It was amazing. And he's like, just go, just go, you know? <laughs> so, and that's kind of all I remember. Then I think the, the vision stopped. So God was just showing me that, you know? And so I was like, okay, so now I have had three of specific open visions myself. I know this is real. You know, I don't have a question anymore. And now, even when I had those visions, I really didn't know what this stuff was all about. I only had the pieces that he showed me. So we, you know, we would talk and go, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I mean, this is like serious, straight up revelation because we didn't really learn this from anybody. It was Holy Spirit all the way around just teaching us this, right? And it, remember, we used to be like staunch post-trib. So this was very new for us, very new. And, um, but we were all, it was so Holy Spirit that we were all just open to it. We were getting it, you know? And um, so we got it and we're like, okay. So we went with it and little by little, we started doing searches on YouTube and found more and more people that had known it even for years, you know? Excuse me, but there weren't a lot. I have to say, I want to say on a scale of, on from one to 10, I would say maybe... Maybe we would find four out of ten people who's, who have known it for a long time. Very, very small percentage. Um, however, as the months through 2019 drew on, as they went on, more and more and more people were understanding it. More people were coming out with videos on it. And more people were talking about it. So finally we were beginning to... And God seemed to connect us to these people. It's not like we were looking for them. They just crossed our path. So God just connected us with people who got it, who understood transfiguration. So we would connect with more and more um, YouTube channels and, and it was really amazing. And um, so um, now here's, here's where I want to clarify a couple things. So now when he began to teach us this, um, we, the way, the way we were, we kind of understood it as he was teaching us um, we kind of, I want to say kind of morphed into like, he, how do I say not morphed? That's not even the right word. Um, he had to build us up into the full understanding of it, you know? So last year when we first learned, we kind of had like three groups. Okay. So we figured we, this is how the Lord, this is how the Lord was opening it up to us. Okay. So we were, cause we were seeing different pictures, um, I had actually even seen this one picture, and I don't talk about this often because I, I've, I've heard a couple people who have seen visions or dreams that were similar, but I haven't had a lot of confirmation on it, so I don't talk about it too much, but it was truly a vision. So I'll share it with you, and you can take it to the Lord, all right? I saw that after we get transfigured, um... Of course, we all know that our job is going to be helping those that are second rounders to, you know, um, get heart healing and deliverance and get set free so they can go with Jesus, right? Um, well, here's what I saw. I saw us ministering to people and some of them, in, as soon as they got the heart healing and deliverance they needed and got any kind of um, heart healing or uh, God created them a clean heart. Whatever was the last little bit they needed left, they were ready, and boom, they joined us in transfiguration. Like, I literally watched them transform right in front of me. So so I was like, okay, God, so does that mean we're going to 
Like, are people just going to transfigure right in front of our eyes? You know, what, what does that mean? And what I, what I kind of got the idea of is that, <clears throat> it's funny, we are just talking about this. Let me grab this little water. So what I kind of got was there's going to be a small percentage of second rounders that are left in the tribulation who don't quite make the first fruits. There's going to be a small fraction of them that were almost there for first fruits, but there was maybe, maybe they didn't want to listen to some of the warnings that the watchmen or the prophets gave out. Um, maybe they didn't, <clears throat> they didn't think they needed heart healing and deliverance, so they didn't go do it. Um, and uh, maybe they came out of a belief system that doesn't think you need heart healing and deliverance, which is oh, it's so sad. Such a sad lie. That is the biggest lie. It's such a lie. Every person in the world needs heart healing and deliverance. Everybody. That's why Jesus said, I came to heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free. Everybody does. Everybody needs it. Um, saved or not, everybody needs it. Um, so... Um, what I saw was like this small fraction of second rounders who didn't quite make it, but as soon as they saw us, all they needed to get do is get that one last thing, maybe the heart healing and deliverance, or maybe they needed to forgive somebody or whatever it was. Okay. Whatever the th one little bit was that didn't quite, they didn't quite make the first, first round. They got it done. They allowed us to pray for them and bam, they joined us in transfiguration immediately. Um, I don't know what percentage that is. I don't know how large that group is. All I can tell you is what I saw. So I'm just sharing that with you. This is just something we saw last year. Or I, I really saw it. Um, I think maybe one of the other girls might have seen something like that. But I, that's just what I saw. That's a vision I saw. So anyway. Um, so they, um, So there's that little small percentage. But basically... What we understood was we had first fruits uh, or the first round. We, we always call them rounds because it just keeps it so that you understand. It's just easier to explain. Okay. So we say first round are the first fruits transfiguration. Okay. The second round are um, what basically the way we saw it back then was we saw it uh, the first round is the first rounders. And then we saw two rounds, which really are the same round, but we kind of split it in half where there's going to be one round that's a little stronger of Christians than the rest. And the rest would really need a lot of ministry to, to get back up to where they need to be. So we kind of split it up a little bit, but um, so that's kind of how we used to, we used to have three groups. We used to be, we think we had the first fruits, the second, second rounders that were much stronger Christians who would make it a lot faster to transfiguration. And then there was the third group who were still saved, but it would, they, they really were kind of far from God and they needed to get a lot of ministry to come back. Okay. Um, now that's how we were, we, we, that's where our stance was for a long time up until about the spring of this year. I believe it was the beginning of May that Julie Wedby, the Lord uh, came, gave her a word that was, oh, I love this word. It's probably one of my favorite words because it breaks it down so beautifully. Um, but in this word, she breaks down um, what, the, how the groups are broken up. Okay. She said, there's the first round, like we know, that's the first fruits transfiguration. And in this group, we will um, go outside of time. Now, the, I'm explaining it my way. You, you, I can, I'll, I'm going to post, in fact, I will post that word under the video so you can go and see how she worded it and everything. She words it, you know, the way the Lord shows her. So here's how, I'm going to say it as best I can, okay, to explain it. So the first fruits... They will get transfigured, they will get taken outside of time. And this is like not, I don't like to call it rapture. Here's why. Because first of all, there's way too many people who think rapture is the way they think it is. And if you call it a rapture, they think you believe what they believe in nine times out of 10, you don't. So they're going to get confused when you start talking about transfiguration. They're going to go on and 
it's not rapture. You know, see what I'm saying? So I don't like to call it rapture because there's too much confusion in that. There's too many false understandings in when you say that word. So that's why I always use transfiguration. And the um, really the way that the transfiguration is going to work, the way the first fruits are going out is going to be a lot like Elijah and Enoch. They just went out. They just left. They didn't. It. They didn't have to die. They didn't have. They. They were not. Well, Elijah. I mean, there was the one. You know, he was taken up in a, a cart. Wasn't it like a? I'm trying to remember how it was. It was like a. Uh, what do you call the things with the? <laughs> they like Romans used to have. I'm trying to think of what they called it. You guys, Jen. What do they call chariot. those? Things? Chariot, chariot. Chariot. Thank you. I was trying to think of the word. I think he was taken up in a chariot. You know. But he was just taken up, spirit, soul, and body out, okay? They were just taken out. It wasn't a rapture. He just took them, okay? Yes, chariot, exactly. <laughs> so um, he, they just took them. So that's what transfiguration is. We're not gonna, it's not going to be um, like, like you see in these movies. Oh, we're going to go float up on a cloud, you know? Oh, our, and our, our clothes will be left neatly folded, you know, it, it, these rapture movies are ridiculous, you guys. <laughs> they really are. It, it's so not. <laughs> it's it's fleshy. It's fleshy. It's their fleshy understanding of how they think it's going to be. That's all. So we are just going to be taken out. It's going to be a twinkling of an eye, just like the Bible says. Okay? We're going to be taken outside of time. <laughs> when we're taken out, um, he will. Uh, we will then get our glorified bodies. Um, and there's been several different, um, words that we've re read. Like I would say, even in the last six months, uh, one was by a girl named Erin who, gosh, she has some beautiful dreams. Um, but hers was on the training and Erin explained that we're going to, when we go outside of time, she actually saw us in training clothes. Like she saw us, uh, with like khakis and t-shirts and stuff, you know, <laughs> it's really cute. And, um, that we would be like, they'd have us, we were at the, all, most of the ones who say, uh, who talk about the training, talk about the mountain, Mount Zion. Okay. Which, um, how we, there has been several words about it being in East Africa, because I believe the garden of Eden is in East Africa or was, is slash was, um, now keep in mind, I'm not talking about fleshly East Africa. I'm talking about as in floating over it outside of time kind of East Africa, okay? So we've had, I've said this before, we had uh, Juanita on our team had a vision at the same, right around the same time Adar had a vision, which was the beginning of this year. And both of them saw a mountain like either Mount Kenya or Mount Kilimanjaro. There's two different possibilities. We, Mount Kilimanjaro has always been kind of where we leaned, because we had another another sister we know who specifically saw Kilimanjaro, but um, there's also Mount Kenya there, and both of them saw um, clouds floating over the top with like a mansion of some kind or a castle that was floating on the clouds. And um, is that the Garden of Eden? Is that um, a piece of heaven we're not quite sure 100 percent, but i know it's we're going to the top of mount zion to see jesus you know um but they all are always talk about the mountains so so aaron's dream um there was he broke us all up all the the first rounders all the first fruits were broken up in small groups and there was an angel in charge of each group to train them and they learned things about um um dealing with different terrains dealing with different kinds of weather um I, I think there's teaching on how to deal with uh demons and the enemy and probably nephilim and fallen angels and that kind of training and so there's a lot of different kinds of training and that's a beautiful I, you know what i'll put that dream in too i'll put both both uh julie wedby's and uh aaron's in there and um so we're gonna have training and now keep in mind, remember, we're going outside of time for this training. It could take like, who knows, a year. It'll maybe feel like a year outside of time because there's no time. And we'll come back to the same flash twinkling or same twinkling of an eye where it'll be like we never left. You know what I mean? Um, now, Aaron's dream, she said we were gone for nine of our days as in as we know it right now. 
Um, I don't know if that's the case, but that's how she saw it. So we were gone for nine days as far as she knows. Um, it's possible it could be three days. It could, uh, I don't know. But we know that there's no time outside of time. It could be as long as we need to get the training and come back at the same moment, you know, so whatever. So, um, so then uh, once we're trained, then he is sending us back. We have assignments. Now, there are some who've had visions where of the 144,000, some have seen a portion of them will go straight to heaven. Um, there also have been words because, um, now this is something I forgot to mention too. Um, at the same time that we go outside of time to transfigure, all of the innocent will be taken out. And they'll be taken out just like we are. They will be taken outside of time and given their glorified bodies. They will be put in safety. Okay. And those are all the children and all the innocent. I believe that includes, I personally believe that includes um, like the handicapped who anybody who does not have the ability to choose Jesus Christ. Anybody who doesn't have the cognitive ability to make the choice for Jesus. Okay, so I believe he he will take any innocent out. Okay, and there there have been many many words, and it's all through Scripture about taking out his innocent. Um, so they will be also taken out. So now think about it. That's going to be millions of babies and little kids, toddlers. There's going to be some small children. Now remember, only God knows when you're of the age of accountability. You know, there might be kids who were, you know, eight or nine and totally get it. And they can choose Jesus and they'll stay. So it's only going to be the ones who cannot make a decision for Jesus. Now, all of those kids who are getting taken out are going to need people to be with them and to spend time with them. I mean, of course, there's all people in heaven too to do it. But I, there have been dreams to say, dreams of visions that say that there's some of the 144,000 will stay with the children. There's, there are some. Um, so that's always a possibility. So some of this 144 may stay with the children. Um, but there are some who say some may go straight to heaven. We do, I, and I don't know, we weren't shown those parts. I just know that that's some of the dreams and visions. So I'm just giving you the things that God, show, God has shown us through other ministries. Um, okay, so now once we come back, we will come straight back in the middle of the tribulation. It's going to be crazy here. Um, the Antichrist will be in full power. The Mark of the Beast will be implemented. And we are going to be helping the rest of the body of Christ who didn't make it, the second rounders. They're going to need help to avoid the Mark of the Beast. They're going to need help getting to any um, um, uh, safe havens. Um, uh, now, there are going to be, some are going to be, God will allow some to be imprisoned. And, and many to be beheaded. And I'm, I know that you guys have read that. Um, and that will happen. But we will also be helping them persevere through that. So I'm sure we're going to have some of the 144,000 who are assigned to the FEMA camps to encourage the other second rounders to be strong and continue, you know. Um, and I'm sure some will be where the beheadings are happening to, to cheer them on and say, hey, you're going to be with Jesus in a second. Don't worry about it, you know. And um, also, let me mention, um, Ken Peters, I don't know if anybody, I can put that under the video too. You know, I got to write, I gotta write a list. Um, you know what, um, Susan or Jen, could you guys write down Ken Peters, um, Julie Wedby's, uh, May 1st message, put it like that because it's the beginning of May, and Aaron's training dream. Can you put, can you guys write that down so I can remember to put that under the description box under the video? Thank you. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, that is all we needed to play on that. So I'm going to bring you back to me. Hi, guys. Okay, so this is really me now. Not just the recording. Um, so we kind of left off with, um, we were talking, we we're going to talk about Ken Peters. So where I had gone with Ken Peters is, uh, Ken had a dream back in, I want to say 1980 or 81. And uh, it was a really heavy dream about the tribulation. And during this dream, 
he saw something really beautiful. He said that, um, he said that he saw, he was up in, like up above the earth, excuse me, he was up above the earth and he was looking down and he saw all these lights shooting up off the earth. And he said, um, he could, he was telling the Lord, I, I don't know what that is. So the Lord brings him back down to the earth and he starts, to try, he's trying to see who it is and he gets close to them and it's the pe it's people. And, and he goes, and I'm, it's not like they were, they were these people that were doing these amazing works. You know, they were, um, what is, what does the Bible say? Greater things shall you do that great exploits. They were doing great exploits. Right. And he said, but the, but the amazing thing was, is they weren't like, you know, amazing, cre uh, you know, like, like movie stars or something like it wasn't anybody special. They're just regular people like you and me, you know? And he said, but they were doing these miracles. He's like, you know, praying for this one, heart healing, deliverance and uh, physical healing for their body. And, that you know, all these amazing miracles and wonders. And it was beautiful, you know. And uh, immediately I knew he's talking about the first rounders. He doesn't say that because he didn't know. I don't think he had a clue what transfiguration was at the time. Um, but that's what it was. He saw. The first fruits that came back, the harvest workers, by the way, first fruits are also called harvest workers because we're bringing in the rest of the harvest. Um, um, and when I say bringing in, obviously the, the angels are actually, I think the angels are reaping, but we help to prepare them and bring them in. It, it's, I can't think we're like helping, I, you know, I'm not going to go into the details of it, but anyway, um, so he sees that it's going to be regular people just like us. So, um, that was an amazing confirmation boy when we saw that and heard it because i i've heard that dream for you know 15 years on and off and when i went back last year and we listened to it again oh what a beautiful thing to to see that cut the confirmation you know so um okay so that's what we talked about with the ken peters and um i think i think that pretty much covers the transfiguration uh, situation things the I, the clarity I wanted to give you clarity on what we believe with transfiguration and um, what this the, what the word of God says there's tons of scriptures that back all this up that's what I wanted to add um, the videos that I put in here um, do have the scriptures that back it up I do have more I in the description box I will put uh, Tim Foster who is also a brother who believes in the transfiguration um, he calls it transformation, you know, whatever, whatever the person wants to call it. Like I said, I don't, I don't like to call it rapture just because there's too much confusion with that. Um, but anyway, Tim Foster is straight up in the word. He loves it. He, he has connected everything. He, you know, he's got all the scriptures to back up the whole thing. Transfiguration is all through the Bible. All of it. It's, it's all the way in there. First fruits, all of it. It's all in the Bible. Um, so I will make sure I put this, the um, links in the description of more um, scriptural backup, okay? Uh, but I do have the videos that I posted um, in the last day. Those also have scriptures that back it up. Okay, so now I am going to share my screen. And we're going to go over a couple things. So um, first I want to show you that this is our website, okay? This is teamjesus222.com. And uh, on here, we have um, all of the explanation. First of all, Grafton and Team Jesus Global Ministries Fellowship. And this is what we love. The whole Lord gave us this at the beginning of the year. Harvesting one broken heart at a time. How beautiful is that? I just, God is so good. Okay, so um, Transfiguration of the Bride is almost here. The Lord is uniting his first fruits bride and bringing, in all, bringing all of us together in one accord for such a time as this. Glory to God. And, you know, because we've gotten so much, so much more of a fuller picture of it, I did reword it, this a lot just in the last couple of weeks. So if you want to come back and read all this, and, and it's a really excellent explanation. Um, and then if you scroll down, we've got all of the videos. We're going to actually add this one from tonight on the top here. So you'll have this one on here as well. But this has all of the, um, mo most of them anyway, of the stuff, things that when, when we've talked about transfiguration in the last two years. Okay. Or a year and a half, anyway. So you can come there and check all that out. Um, 
and um, by the way in case you want to know this is the rest of our site if you want to check out this is our home page um, I did do a video on this not too long ago but this is you know everywhere you can go this is you know if you want to bless the ministry I and mean, that's you can mail it if you want but then we have this is our um, twitch link if you want to go to our live streams that if you want to you know the best way to do it um, I can't always send the emails to announce our um, twitch live streams by the way so if you want to get regular notifications just click on here and go to twitch and sign up for twitch and then you go to our grafted in team jesus 222 um this will bring you right to the channel uh, go to the channel and friend us and stuff and it, i think you sign up for the notifications and they'll notify you I'll notify you of everything anyway so this has some videos on it you can come check come check this out i don't want to spend too much time here but the, what i wanted to really show you is there's two chat pages 24 hours please come to the team jesus chat and this will this is um, for anybody who wants to just uh, talk about the Lord, talk about see what's going on. We do post videos and things like that on here. But Dan, this is Dan's news page. We are in the end times. Oh gosh, he keeps up with all the news. You'll have all kinds of links there. It's an excellent one too. Okay, so that said, um, I wanted to bring up the reason I'm coming over here is because we want to talk about the ten virgins, the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25. Um, there was a comment under one of our videos and, and I want to, I really want to address this if the, because of the comment, it, it made me realize I do need to explain a little more, a little bit more. And, um, w just so that everybody has a, uh, an understanding. So talking, talking about the scriptures that back up the first fruits going first, let me, let me explain, um, about the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Okay. We did post this video. I want you to know these are the two videos that I posted. Okay. This one is probably from the beginning of this year. And this one is from July. Um, we, this one is, um, we didn't, we've learned so much since this video. So I, that's why I wanted to make this to, to explain a little lot more. But this one was really great. The one that the video that I am sharing on here with the mountain is probably like 10 years old, but it doesn't even matter because it had such beautiful stuff in it. I want to no, actually maybe like eight years, but it's a, it, this is such a great video, really beautiful explanation of transfiguration. So it, um, I would say try listening to both of those, but so we're going to focus on the five wise virgins. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and read the scripture first. It says, uh, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto 10 virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Okay, so that is such a beautiful parable. And it, boy, oh boy, does it explain first fruits all the way, complete backup. So this is, you know, I'll tell you, we, I, don't, I don't know this ministry. I don't know what they believe or anything, but boy, this page explains it so beautiful, so beautiful. Um, and it really backs up what the Lord showed me about the 10 virgin, virgins, <laughs> and I'm going to explain it here. So I'm going to read this real quick. In the parable of the ten virgins, Jesus compares Christian life with five wise virgins and five foolish virgins and their preparations before going out to meet the bridegroom. And then, of course, they give the scripture. All of the virgins went out to meet the bridegroom. They had said goodbye to the world in order to seek the things that are above. Let me say this again. They had said goodbye to... They had said goodbye to the world in order to seek the things that are above where Jesus is. Colossians 2, 1 through 2. They all took their lamps with them. There was only one difference between them. 
the wise virgins took oil in their vessels together with their lamps. So they had extra oil. They knew that they needed to be ready. But the foolish virgins did not realize that they had to take the oil in their vessels. They didn't, they didn't prepare. They didn't bring the oil that they were going to need. If the oil, if the oil ran out, they didn't do it. They didn't prepare. They didn't listen to the warnings. They didn't get ready like they were supposed to. Okay. So then, um, this is so great. The lamps represent our confession of faith. Matthew 10, 27, Matthew 5, 15. Uh, they cannot shine without oil. And to obtain oil, something must be crushed. Like, you know, olive oil, you got to crush the, the um, olives. You know, whatever the oil you get, something's got to be crushed to get the oil. Lamps that brightly shine with life and teaching are desperately lacking. In other words, there's not enough of us out there, guys. If my confession of faith is that I am to walk in Jesus' footsteps, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return, 1 Peter 2, 21 and 23, my lamp will not shine if I revile in return. But in order for me not to revile in return, something within me has to be crushed. What is that something? My self-will, honor, pride, sin, whatever it is, guys. Unforgiveness. If it's crushed, then my lamp will shine. This is such confirmation for the heart healing and deliverance that I've that the Lord told me about. It's just amazing. So now we're going to we're going to skip down here. Putting off sin that burdens our conscience gives us oil in our lamp. Vanity, honor, pride, seeking stinginess, um self-seeking, stinginess. All of these things that people can see must be put off and crushed. If our lamp is to give light. Oh, I love this. This is so perfect. The five foolish are content with this because the foolish virgins don't want to deal with it. They're like, oh, I'm good. I'm saved. I'm good. I don't need to do any of that stuff. Oh, the, you know, like a oh, one saved, always saved. Oh, I, once when I received Jesus, all that stuff was done. Uh, what? Huh? Well, call me crazy. Uh, scripture says... I came to heal the broken heart and to kept, set the captives free. That doesn't happen, ta-da. That's something you need to get. It's a process. God needs to get in your heart. You need to give up the world before he can set you free. You've got to give up. You've got to renounce. You've got to ask for forgiveness. You've got to forgive. This is what heart healing and deliverance is all about. So the five foolish virgins didn't even pay attention to that. They're content. They're good. They're all good. They think they're good, right? The one who is satisfied with his spiritual condition, such as it is, becomes one of these five foolish virgins. But see, guys, the spirit searches much deeper. If you also want to have oil in your vessel, that means having that extra oil, that extra strength, the extra oil of Holy Spirit, you must come to rest in your inner being so that you can hear the Spirit's voice. Oh, this is so amazing. This completely confirms our healing and deliverance right here. Like this is God so sent me to this site. I love this. Oh, you must have that rest in your heart, in your inner being, so that you can hear the Spirit of God, so you can hear the Spirit's voice. There, He will give you light and show you the much deeper degree of sin that you've been carrying than you ever could have imagined. This is why it's vital to walk in the Spirit, Galatians 5.25, to acknowledge what He shows you and to crush it 
The five wise virgins see the value of this vessel life and they love it and they get oil in their lamps and in their vessels. They get that extra Holy Spirit oil because they get the heart healing and deliverance. They allow God to create in them a clean heart. They allow God to circumcise their heart. They crucify the flesh. They're ready. They're ready. They've left the world. Yeah, they have to function in it until they leave, but they don't care about it anymore. They don't they don't care about these the cars and houses and things to buy and baseball and soccer and little league and television and radios and cell phones and video games. They don't care about that anymore because they're completely focused on Jesus Christ and they're focused on their walk with him. That's what the five wise virgins are all about because they know what Jesus is looking for. What does the scripture say? What does Jesus say? the scripture John 20 I believe John 20 let's look up John 20 you know what no because it said it right at the top I'm gonna say what it says this is what I'm looking Jesus says when I come back will there be faith on earth that's where I'm going Jesus is saying let's go back here Jesus is saying to those full, to all of all of us, when I come back, am I going to find any faith on earth? Am I going to find the ones who have dedicated their entire lives to me? Am I going to find the ones who said no to the world and yes to me? Am I going to find the ones who love my written word, my rhema word, and my body, my the body of Christ? Am I going to find that faith anywhere? Will I? That's what he's saying right now. Am I going to find that faith? Those are the five wise virgins. The ones who have died to themselves and given their everything to Jesus Christ. And they know he's coming back right now. Now. Not 10 minutes from now. Not two years from now. Not 50 years from now. Right now. And they're ready. They have heeded all the warnings from the watchmen and the prophets. They've prepared their hearts. They've prepared in every way the Lord has led them to prepare and they are ready. Those are the five wise virgins. Those are the first fruits, the 144,000, the harvest workers. They're ready and they are are the ones who will escape the tribulation hours as far as experiencing them. They will be there, but they will be in their glorified bodies. So they're the ones who are going to escape. You know how it says, Jesus said, pray, pray that you will escape that pray that you be counted worthy to escape these things. Only the first fruits will escape. And it's not going to be that, you know, pre-trip rapture flying up in the sky and being gone, going to heaven forever, not even dealing with anything. No. Like I said, there are some who say some of them will, but I we haven't seen that, so I can't answer to that. But I can say we are under this understanding through scripture and the rhema word in the body of Christ. The first fruits will be taken outside of time, will be trained and we will be in our glorified bodies. We will be transfigured into our glorified bodies and sent back to the earth at the same moment or very shortly after. And we will work the harvest. We will help the rest of the body of Christ, the second rounders, get their lives right with him. They will get the heart healing and deliverance and they will get ready to go with him and be with him in forever in the new millennium. Okay. Um, and then, of course, we'll have the um, 
the cloud, the great coming in the clouds when everybody goes with him. Um, so I think that's about the most, that's about everything we wanted to cover today. Um, there's probably more. If, if the Holy Spirit gives me more that he wants me to share, I will probably maybe do another video or I'll add it to the next video. But I do believe this covers pretty much everything. So I'm going to put some really powerful links. We're going to put more scriptural links in there in the description box. I will put uh, Ken Peters in there. So you'll have the, um, you'll be able to watch his dream. It was such an amazing dream. Um, really heavy. It's going to tell you some heavy stuff from tribulation. Um, then I will also put, um, Julie Wedby's amazing explanation of the first and first and second rounds and the tears for her. She separated them into three groups, but the first group is first fruits. Second group is the rest of the body of Christ that needs to still be refined. And I want to make sure I make that clear. The second group, the reason the second rounders have to go through tribulation it's because that is their refining process. They did not allow God to create them in the clean heart before the tribulation. So now they're going to have to deal with the bad stuff to get that heart healing and deliverance and refining. They got to burn that dross off. So they're going to have to deal with the tribulation. But God is sending us to be there for them, to help guide them and pray for them and help them get that heart healing and deliverance. Okay. Um, and then um, the third round for Julie Webby that the Lord showed Julie Webby was the tares. Those are the ones that are going to go get uh, wrapped up and burned in the fire because they did not follow Christ. They were fake, fake Christians, lukewarm, um, to all the all the ones who just would never choose him. OK, and so I'm going to I'm going to put that one in there. And also Aaron's dream. I can't remember her last name, but she had she also had a dream. I believe it was in May. And that was about the training. So I will put all those links in the description and you can check it out. Um, otherwise, I think that's it for tonight. If you have any questions or you feel like you need more heart healing, please uh, let us know and um, send us an email at graftedinteamjesus222 at gmail.com. That's graftedinteamjesus222 at gmail.com. Oh, I just love you guys so much. I'm so excited. Um, if the Lord reminds me of anything that I that I missed on this today, like I said, I'll add it to another video, but I think this pretty much covers it. Um, and like I said, pop over an email if you have any questions, okay? Love you guys. God bless you. And we are really excited. And we're going to see everybody in the first round outside of time pretty quick. Okay, big hugs, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.